All right. Well, welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about Emily Bell Freeman's talk, uh, Walking in Covenant Relationship with Christ. And we're going to be missing Colleen. <laughs> She's the star of the show and she had a conflict today. So um, we're going to make do with the rest of us and uh, see how we can uh, make it work. Um, we've got great material. So um, who all is here and what do you think of this? Uh, what was your big takeaway from this talk? He has to unmute me. It won't let me unmute myself. Now, Lori won't be. Lori won't be with us either. She's with Colleen. Um, my big takeaway was the five finger promise. Uh, I think that's kind of cool that you know, if we did that every day with our kids and ourselves. How much more focused we'd be on our Father in Heaven and what what He has told us He's going to do for us. Yeah, I I love that. It was um, not only was it a great list, but it was also uh, the way she said it: the five finger promise. You can tick it off. I am with you. Let me. I will keep you safe. You. I will bring you home again. I will not leave you. I will keep my promise to you. Yes. Do you, want, uh, you, do you know, want to tell more about who who got the promise and what the setting was? Well, it was uh, Jacob, you know, when he went to live with, why can't I remember his name right now? Um, his parents told him to leave. Because his brother was, was. Oh, Esau. Esau was wanted to kill him. Yeah, that's At that time, not you know, later not on, a good feeling. <laughs> no, not a good feeling. So Jacob journeyed far from home, and he had the dream. It's you know the same time he had uh, the dream of Jacob's ladder, and on that night the Lord stood beside him and and gave him the five finger promise. I'm I'm with you. You know, how's that make us us feel? Because these promises are for us too. It's not just for for Jacob; it's for that whole posterity. Um, one thing that you know before that she talked about the promise in in verse or paragraph six. I thought it was interesting that you know a lot of people or even Jacob, he was blinded by what was broken in him. And uh, the Lord's simple request was, walk with me. It wasn't, you know, you got to do this and this and this to get yourself better. Um, and and my big thought on that was, are we blinded what's broken in, by what's broken in us? Because each of us, we're all God's children. And... Each of us, we don't always feel, I know I don't always feel worthy or, uh, you know, that I should be deserving of things. But Heavenly Father has promised us that we are, as long as we turn to him and, and move forward in, in building relationship with him. It's, uh, you know, he's invited us to walk with him. You know, come follow me. So, yeah. What one of the things I really liked is re at the beginning. There's nothing that prevents me from trying. Mm -hmm. I I just love that. Yeah, that was that was great because there was no guarantee that she could make it. <laughs> But uh -uh. her willingness to try and her dedication uh, made a difference. And it was awesome that the the guide was willing to support her and help her do what mm -hmm. as much as he could. Just like our Heavenly Father supports us. 
Right. And she had the will to, to do it. Right. She she did have the will and and it reminded me, you know, it's kind of become a cliche, but um uh, you know, all those posters that say though when there were single footprints, that was when I carried you. <laughs> the pulling oh, her yes. along with, in the sand. Yeah. Uh, the pulling her along on her scooter. I had one of those scooters. I I know what it's like. <laughs> and uh, having a, a rope there and, and giving her that extra a little oomph because um you get so worn out your you know one leg's on the scooter and the other one is trying to give you all the um, momentum and it's hard and she probably would not have made it without that um oh, that extra pulling yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well those scooters are pretty yeah. off balance anyway you know? yes yeah. We're, not, we're not we're not designed to to ride around on a scooter like that but <laughs> no. no but the sure was, beats crutches <laughs> yeah it was interesting that uh <clears throat> maya left her cord on the scooter so that that's uh, right so emily's, that the nephews emily's nephew and his friend could pull her around yeah. other places yes. in Jerusalem. right and isn't yes. that a little bit how things work with us where if we you know it suggests in here that one of the things you do is tie yourself to someone who has a strong testimony and mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. and that court is kind of like that where you know we're on a scooter helping along but we can align ourselves with others you know the prophet the apostles those in this you know leadership positions or even other people like you and i Right. That, you know, that can help us along the path so that we can see the things we need to see and experience the things we need to experience. And, you know, basically, and she talks about it in here, she says, um, in, in paragraph eight, it says, just as he did for Jacob, the Lord will answer each of us in our day of distress. If we choose to tether our life with his. Mm -hmm. We yeah. get to choose. It's us. He's already there waiting for us to, to hook on and, and, and follow. He's him. already said, he said, I'm with you. I will keep you safe. And I will not leave you and I will keep my promise to you. Right. So telling us that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is stay on the covenant path and do what's right, and he will be there for us no matter what. In in paragraph nine, it talks about covenant. You know, a covenant is a promise. We talk about promises a lot. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I don't think we always think about is that covenant is a relationship. Yes. It is. Rela when we covenant with God, we become in relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And when we, you know, when you get married in the temple, you covenant to be in relationship with your wife or your husband. And, and God is part of that too. Mm -hmm. because that's a covenant we make with him. Um, you know, it's, it's. Well, it says that the Lord will answer each of us in our own distress, mm -hmm. in our own stress. And I like that. If we choose to tether to him. Right. Right. I liked that she said Jacob had a choice to make. Um, mm -hmm. when, uh, when, that, when I was listening to the talk, um, I got distracted and I heard the choice and then I didn't hear what the choices were. And I thought, what were the choices? <laughs> so I had to go back and I read it because I thought, wait a minute, he didn't say you can walk on the covenant path or you can, and he didn't give him an alternative, did he? <laughs> um, but the choice was 
he had been introduced to to God and the teachings of his father and he could choose to live life in a committed covenant relationship with him or he could just be simply acquainted with yeah this is how how my parents believe and I remember when I was uh, 16, um, I, I was going out with a guy that was quite a bit older. He was 21. Um, he had been on, on a mission. And this was when uh, people were, men were being drafted to go to Vietnam. And he told, about, told me about how he really wanted to serve a mission, but he his friends were going to Vietnam and he felt like it was wrong for him to not be there with them and to support them. And so he prayed about it and he promised God that if he could just have the chance to go on a mission, that he would um, volunteer to go to uh, to Vietnam as soon as he got back and and that's what he did and he <laughs> went to Vietnam and that shocked me because I my brother was a year older than I and he was at the age where he could be drafted and we saw on TV how people were getting blown up and dying all over the place and I thought would I be willing to die for the opportunity to teach the gospel. I mean, I've always lived uh, in the gospel. I go to church and I know my parents have taught me well, but I, I had to figure out, is this what I want most in my life? Would I be willing to give everything for it? And that's, that's what Jacob did. He made the choice to live in a committed covenant relationship uh, with God. And, and I did a lot of self-examination. I started reading the scriptures real seriously so that I could get to where, yes, that's what I want. And um, I, I know people who say, have you been saved? Like it's an event, a one-time thing. And there are special events. This was a special event for Jacob when the Lord um, gave him those promises. But it's not just an event. It's it's a path. It's a journey. And uh, that's what I that's why we call it the covenant paths. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's interesting that that Emily was in, you know, Israel, and she wanted to walk the uh, the covenant or, or walk the Jesus trail and she'd just broken her leg and you know hey we all have she had that physical disability that caused her not to be able to do it like she thought she was going to be able to do it but what disabilities do we have that that make us you know not continue in the path or uh, avoid, you know, uh, avoid things so that uh, we don't let Heavenly Father and Christ into our lives to help us overcome those things because they can and they will and they do. That's that's the promise that, that Jacob received that has blessed his whole his whole family, which is us again right and um and we all do have those broken parts those weaknesses like like enoch is who said i'm just a lad slow of speech and um if we are embarking on the covenant path we have to be willing to accept help and be humble uh, and yet be trusting because if we're just humble 
and just really aware of our weaknesses, <laughs> which a lot of times I am, then you might feel like I can't do this. But knowing that that he is there for us and that we he's walking with us and that we can get the help that we need, that is what makes the difference. Right. Absolutely. Well, I love the statement at the end of the paragraph 10 that it says, and as your trial will demand, so his sucker will be. So sometimes it's not to reach out and comfort you right away or stop the trial right away, or it's whatever you need at the time. I know it doesn't always feel that like that when you're in the middle of a trial, but whatever yeah, I... you need at the time is what will happen. That's a good thought. I, you know, even stepping back one, one uh, sentence before that, and it says, you know, scripture reminds us often that those mm -hmm. blessings come in his time and in his own way. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. I know we talk at, at home about God and Christ. They're not, a, he's not a vending machine God where you go, you put your quarter in and you go, Oh, I want this. And I want this. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, it's he knows what's best for us, and and as we align with him and become more like him, uh, it it makes it so that he can open the windows more of heaven and pour out those blessings. Yeah, I liked that. Uh, um. She said, his is a mission of condescension. I remember when I read that in the Book of Mormon, I thought, uh, you know, when the angel asked Nephi uh, if he understood the condescension of God, and Nephi was like, oh, well, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but, but I I know, I don't remember what he said. I know he can do all things or something like that. I think he said, I know he loves me. Yeah. Anyway, um, I thought, what would I have said? I think <laughs> I would have said, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have any idea what you mean. But it was that he was willing to, to come to earth and to experience uh, the same experiences, um, hard things that, that we do. He was willing to humble himself and meet us where we are as we are and and that's that's the condescension that he he doesn't expect us to bridge the gap and come up to him because he he holds our hand he lifts us he walks with us and and then emily said he's his is also a mission of ascension Mm -hmm. The condescension is that he will reach down. That's like that painting right behind you. <laughs> I, was where... I was just having irony. It's like, yes, that's <laughs> a perfect uh, example. Yeah, where you see, I mean, you feel like you are Peter in the water. <laughs> and he is reaching down to lift you up. So it's a mission of ascension. He'll work with us to lift us up. And enable us to, well, like it, um, it says that when we meet him, um, we shall be like him. Mm -hmm. um, if we have, if if we have lived his teachings, then we become more like him. Mm -hmm. That's true. It kind of reminds me, you know, how. Even Emily talks about aligning ourselves with someone who's at a further along the path to, mm -hmm. to help us, you know, move up. And a quick little story just popped into my mind when I was young. I don't remember. But it was peewee hockey, and I was in, living in southern Alberta. And my, we would drive into Lethbridge. And I was on a team. We won the championship that year. We had one, I don't remember the boy's name, 
but he won the most improved uh, player. When when we started the season, if you've ever skated, you know, you, you keep your feet like this. Well, his feet were, he was almost walking on the, the side of his feet. He could, you know, and he'd crawl down the boards. By the end, he was, you know, he wasn't the greatest player, but he stuck to it and, you know, as we helped him and showed him and uh, the coaches worked with him. And it's just like that with our savior. He's there. He comes to us. He can, you know, condescends to come down to our level. And then he ascends back up with us going with him. And if we choose that, mm -hmm. and that's always, you know, agency is always part of God's plan. He will never force us to do anything. So. I, I also liked the, the point, uh, well, like you said about that, it's, it, it's a relationship. It's not just a promise, but it's a relationship. And it's um, in the same way that, in a marriage covenant, the wedding day is a big deal. I mean, people pay a whole, whole, whole lot of money for all the the festivities because the wedding date is very important. And, and our baptism date, when we enter into the waters of baptism, that's very important. But it, it's not the end. It's just the beginning. Uh -huh. Um, it, the relationship that is forged through a life lived together um, in a marriage, uh, learning from each other and growing together. And in this covenant relationship, um, walking with God and, and learning from him and choosing his way. I mean, there are a lot of times when when we're probably thinking, you know, that looks pretty good over there. I kind of want to go down that path of ways. <laughs> and if we aren't um, with him in the covenant relationship, we can go down into dead ends and detours that can be really harmful. Uh, but as, as long as we are following the covenant path and walking with him, then he won't let us mess up too seriously <laughs> and go astray no and he'll let us jump on at any time mm -hmm. even if we mess up we can repent and you know be back on the path which is wonderful which i wish some people i knew could realize that you know all they would have to do is start walking the path again and their life would change yeah. Hey, I want to ask this. I want you to think of why, and I'm going to make a statement that comes out of the talk, and then let's let's discuss that a little bit. In paragraph 13, Emily Bell Freeman says, we must remember, it's not the course alone that will exalt us. It's the companion, our Savior. And this is the why of the covenant relationship. What does mm -hmm. that mean to you and why? That we well, couldn't. go ahead. Uh, we we just couldn't. It wouldn't happen. Um, any course we followed wouldn't be the same without the Savior in it, and that's why we have a covenant relationship, so that we can be successful and make good things happen. Well, we learn by doing, but when we do and we do wrong, <laughs> when we mess up or or um, haven't figured it out, it's having him with us, teaching us and showing us the way that makes the difference because uh, um, we, it's not just the the walking on the path because if it was then when we made a mistake 
uh, we would be off the path uh, or we would we would not be able to move forward. Uh, but walking with him, so we're lifted and so that we learn from our mistakes and and have the opportunity to repent and and to um, start walking again. Uh, that's what makes the difference. That's why it's, I mean, we, we would be a lost cause mm -hmm. if it was just, okay, here's the instructions. Have at it. <laughs> uh, it kind of goes along with the way, you know, the prophet's been encouraging us to move forward. It's, you know, we're not checking boxes. We're building relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of people uh, over you know, time in the past, it's, oh, you go to the temple, you get baptized, you know, you check all the boxes. Okay, I made it. And that's not really what it is. It's developing that deeper relationship. And, you know, when President Nelson brought out the Come Follow Me program, what a blessing that has been. Look at, look at how much more you've been able to if you chose to, you know, there were people doing it before, but I think a lot more people have gotten into the scriptures and, and have learned a lot more about our savior and our heavenly father and the plan. And, you know, it's, it's helping us move along the covenant path as we ascend, you know, and mm -hmm. the, in making all of the covenants that we have to make, and then we have to live them and, and become more like our Father in Heaven, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kind of exciting. Uh -huh. let's, let's talk about the temple. Did, did you read in paragraph, or paragraph 14 where Emily went to the Western Wall? Yeah. Yes. And, and she was talking about how the people there are praying for a temple to come back. Right. You know, are, are we doing that? Are we praying for, you know, and look what, look what's happened around the world. Temples are being built everywhere so that they're closer to um, the people, making mm -hmm. it easier for the people to participate and go back and return and learn more and deepen their relationship with our Savior and our Heavenly Father. Uh, We're a little bit spoiled when it comes to temples, I think. Yeah. You know, we were very, very fortunate to have temples in Utah, like three or four miles apart. And yeah, we're you know, very spoiled. <laughs> you read, you read to where you know they didn't even have a temple. And when I read that, I was I was thinking how spoiled we are because we are so um, blessed to have all the temples. If one's closed for cleaning, there's another one yeah. nearby open. <laughs> and I mean, they were just praying for one temple. Uh, one, yes. of, one of the things that amazed me the most, we were baptized on the island of Guam. You could go over that island in one day's time. You could cover the whole island in less than a day. And then when that was announced to be a temple on Guam, it's like, yeah, this is a little tiny island. The Lord wants everybody in the temple. Mm hmm Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, Puts us puts our feet firmly on, you know. This afternoon I'll be working in the Newport Beach Temple, and it's it's home. It's Heavenly Father in Christ's home. Mm -hmm. And when we go there, you know, we usually, if we're at the the recommend desk, you know, we'll say welcome to the temple. And I I sometimes even say welcome home. To the house of the Lord, because we are going home when we go back to the temple. And it's there to help us and to remind us of how much Heavenly Father and Christ love us and what we can do to help 
prepare ourselves to return to their presence. We're walking up the mountain of the Lord to return to his presence. And it's so, so beautiful to be able to witness how much love our Savior and our Heavenly Father have for each and every one of us. He wants us all to be there. So, you know, for those of you who've never been to the temple, prepare yourself. We don't have to be perfect. We need to strive to be more like Heavenly Father in Christ. And, you know, mm -hmm. we have to go through baptism and those types of things. But those temples are there for everyone if they are willing to make the commitments that God has asked us to make. And it's very, very special in that way. Yes, you have to have a recommend. Um, but that's to help us prove to him that we are worthy and we want to be there. Yes. I was 60, almost 64 the first time I went to the temple. Mm-hmm. Me, the temple's a very, very special, sacred place. It took me many, many years to follow this journey and become baptized at 52. Oh, I didn't quit. My phone His, died. Her so phone I... died. Um, but, you know, as when I joined the church at 52, I knew that one day I wanted to go to the temple. That was something I strived for. And I think... Most every member, I would hope that's a member, would have that same desire. Um, but I knew that, I don't know, there was part of me that wouldn't get my patriarchal blessing because I was afraid of what it was going to say and what I was going to have to do. And I knew that was <laughs> part of the path that I had to go on. So I waited actually until I was almost 64 to get my patriarchal blessing and then when I got it, I didn't want to listen to it because it said I would get married and I was not going to get married again. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes we, I had to pray, do a lot of deep praying and the Lord just answered my prayer and said, no, you will find a way. Um, so, you know, I joined an LDS dating site and eventually got married. And I think that the Lord, I know that the Lord has us have a patriarchal blessing so he can show us the path that we need to go on for ourselves. And, and one thing I, I noticed that you said there, Sandy, is you were afraid of it. You had fear. Mm -hmm. And, and where's, where do we know fear comes from? From the adversary. The adversary, yes. Mm -hmm. And we, you know... People, you're not alone in that. All of us have fears. Mm -hmm. And Christ wants us to put those aside and give them to him and, and come unto him, right? Correct. Mm. And that's what I did, but it took many years for that feeling to go away. And, you know, with a lot of prayer, it, it, it all worked out. But, you know. I did let the adversary in for many years because I was so afraid. But I'm that glad I'm you weren't moving along the path. It just means you're probably going a little slower than you could have, I was right? A little stagnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was new member and I was just afraid of what that blessing would say. And and then when I got it, then I was, I really had to do some praying. And my friend Sue was there with me when I had it. And another friend, and we both kind of, we all kind of looked at each other and wondered, how is this going to happen? <laughs> but with a lot of prayer and guidance of, through the Lord, things worked out. What would you say to someone, Sandy, that's, that's new in the the gospel, knowing the church about getting their patriarchal blessing? 
I would definitely tell them not to be afraid. And I would tell them that the patriarchal blessing is there to guide them. It doesn't mean that if it says something you don't want to do tomorrow, that doesn't mean you have to do it tomorrow. It just means it's in the future. Be patient, study and prepare. And, prepare. and he will guide you along through that and, and, make, and make everything I believe in your patriarchal blessing happen. Because everything that was in my blessing base is happened. It didn't happen overnight. Like a lot of times we want everything overnight. We want it now. That's just the way the human spirit is. I mean, we want it now. And we have to realize it's on God's timeline. And so his timeline, if people would get their blessing, if they just know that, you know, it's not going to happen tomorrow. You just, you need to pray about it and it will eventually happen and don't be afraid of it how has having your patriarchal blessing helped you stay on and move forward on the covenant path um before my patriarchal blessing i would make excuses not to go to church i would you know i never thought of marriage um i just wasn't that committed to church i I would actually go shopping on Sunday. I would do things that I knew weren't right. But after I got my blessing, I knew that the Lord had a plan for me and what he wanted me to do and how he wanted me to do it. And I needed to listen. But before I had it, I was kind of a free will. I was in the church, but I was doing what I wanted to do. And then after I got my patriarchal blessing, I felt like, you know, now... I'm able to go to the temple and, you know, I was temple worthy and I needed to change a lot of things in my life. And I did because I wanted those blessings. So it sounds like part of it was the blessing, the, the gift of the blessing. And, but probably the greater part of it was your deeper commitment level <laughs> that you opened your heart to to being guided and and you had decided I, I want his will not yes. my will that's true very well so uh, that's that was really um that was really a significant point in your life that that deepening of that opening up to okay I want to do what you want me to do <laughs> right yeah that kind of reminds me of of looking in the talk and uh, paragraph 22, uh, you know, Emily in paragraph 21 talked about, because I want to live in committed covenant relationship with him. And then she goes on, there's kind of a little formula here. Perhaps you do too. Begin where you are. So you began mm -hmm. where you were. Don't let your condition hinder you. So that's a, you mm -hmm. know, whatever Wherever you're at right now, don't let that stop you. Don't let that hinder you. Uh, I just, and then remember, pace or placement on the path are not as important as progress. Correct. We all start at different places. Right. We have to, we have to move along the path. It's it's orderly, right? Correct. And it's not a race. No. Exactly. <laughs> And then the next thing she said, and we talked about this a little earlier, was ask someone you trust who is on the covenant path to introduce you to the Savior they have come to know. Mm -hmm. Learn more of him. So, you know, we have a, an obligation and duty to learn more of, of Christ and, and what he wants us to do and how he does things so that we can we can mimic it. We can emulate it and become that. As we do things over and over, they become more natural to us. Huh. And then the last thing, and you know, we need to, and she says, invest in the relationship by entering into covenants to covenant with him. It doesn't matter your age or your condition, you can walk with him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. When I was on my mission, 
um, there was a young couple that we met. This was in Norway and, um, and missionaries didn't have that many, usually didn't have that many people that agreed to be baptized. <laughs> um, and so we, we were really excited about this young couple and they, they talked about being baptized, but they, there was something that was holding them back. They were very, very shy. Both of them were so quiet and so shy. And they had two cute little kids and they were just a beautiful little family. But um, we had to figure out what is it that is that is holding them back from making this commitment. And then one day we found out, <laughs> they said, we decided we can do it. And, and uh, I said, oh, great. And they said, we... We are, we have a hard time speaking to other people. So we didn't, we didn't know how we could do it, go door to door like you guys do, but, but we're ready and we're going to try. And that's when we figured out they thought that by getting baptized, that they had to go proselyting like like we did uh, um yeah. as missionaries instantly and they couldn't figure out what would they do with their kids and they're so they were so scared of talking to strangers that it was hard for them to even talk to people who weren't strangers and it was it was just amazing that they agreed to that <laughs> because they wanted um the blessings of being baptized and being on the covenant path and then we told them oh you don't have to do that <laughs> it was kind of, kind of like that story about the little boy who who was a a blood match for his sister who was going to have surgery and 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 so he gave he donated his blood for his little sister and then he said to the doctor so when do i die <laughs> and the doctor said what <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, well, I gave her my blood. So I, when you don't have blood, then you die, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was willing to give that. Uh, um, so that's, it reminded me of that when that couple was willing to do that um, because they wanted to, to do what is right and be uh, close to the Savior. And that why is what opens up your your heart um and changes it changes your mind like um okay maybe i can um quit doing other things on sunday and go to church you mm -hmm. know because you you have that desire the why to be like him and to to feel his love and um and to do his will, uh, not just whatever you feel like. Uh, so uh, anyway, that your story reminded me of, of that couple and how impressive it was that even though for them, that was like the hugest challenge that they could even imagine and they were willing to take it on. That's great. That's, That's great. great. Awesome. awesome. Katie, did you have anything you wanted to share? Nice. Hey, John. Thanks for being here with us today. Um, Someone had uh -huh. to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we get thrown into the middle of the fire because uh, there's no one else to throw in. <laughs> well, um, I do appreciate you leading and I've enjoyed the comments and the discussion. And you've already touched on so many. Of, this is actually like my very most favorite talk from conference and you've already spoken of like hit on so many of the main points um and i like relationship with christ in the gospel has probably been my focus on my gospel study for about a year now um and it's so nebulous <laughs> from my mm -hmm. experience like i definitely can like tell you like 
if you wanted to hear my conversion story, my, ex- my experience with listening to the spirit, my experience with feeling Christ's redemption, my experience feeling the weight of the law, feeling the grace that Christ provides, um, I could very succinctly map out for you the experiences that I had, the impact that they had, the meaning that it had, um, and also the lift that it gives me um, to carry on. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful that I have that. Um, and I have bits of it encapsulated in writing. And um, and there's a very real gratitude alive in my heart as a result of all of those little pebbles of love that that God has been adding to my soul to help me on the path. And I just loved, loved the question that, that she posed to ask someone you trust who is on the covenant path to introduce you to the Savior they have come to know. And I just think that that's such an awesome question to pose in in an intimate way with someone else. Someone else that you just want to get to know better in the gospel or someone you admire. Um, and I I really wish that there were more like opportunities in church to be able to share that exact, the answer of that question. Um, but I feel like it's, it's a really big question and people, unless they like know in advance that they're going to be answering it. Um, and that there's time set aside for that, right? Like, I don't, I don't know that we're really digging as deep with our, our gospel, like rubbing shoulders with each other where we're not necessarily taking the time to, to lay out all of the feast the whole feast that I've had my life over. You know what I mean? Like I can share moments and I can definitely share the sentiment that it's brought me. Right. Um, But the depth of it and the intensity of it and the reality of it, there, there usually isn't time or circumstance to really honor the whole story. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, I really wish that there was more of that because I feel like the gospel has so much depth to offer. And sharing small small tidbits of examples of where we've definitely noticed God's hand in our life or hearing that in others, I feel like it's so encouraging. It's it's such a blessing to me to hear hear tidbits of, of the ideas people had and how God led them and the results. And do you know what I mean? Their spiritual yeah. experiences. Um, are so touching and I maybe it's just that I'm I'm wired for depth I just really enjoy um, my deep emotions and my and the the meaning that's in them right and and maybe not everyone appreciates that the same way that I do (laughs) maybe not everyone needs that Um, which is fine I just I just really feel like having that or more of that would would help to build camaraderie and fellowshipping in the gospel. Yeah. That is I think that's probably something that we would have to do on our own in our relationships with with each other with with the people that we admire um and um take the time we can't I mean we're only in church for a, a short time so it, it, it kind of has to be done at um on our own time in other settings yeah I, I agree and I think that that's what fast and testimony meeting is for but I think too many people don't understand that purpose get up and and don't answer this question which is what they should be answering when they're bearing their testimonies i think that's my feeling i think you are all right and i think that is probably why emily bell freeman uh encouraged people to get together like we are yeah Mm -hmm. and study the scriptures and study the, the the talks from conference because it gives us a place to 
you know, yes. you learn something. What's the first thing you have to do? You have to share it. And then you have to teach it. Okay. And that's how you master it. When you do those steps, and that's what this is allowing us to do, is to deepen our understanding and our relationships with the scriptures and with our Savior through the scriptures and through listening to the prophet's voice and the other apostles and the other leadership in the church because the Savior is at the helm. This is his church. This is the kingdom rolling forth on the earth. And he wants to strengthen all of us because everything out there is working to tear down the family, tear mm -hmm. down the individual, uh, destroy us even wanting to be related to God. And I heard something yesterday, uh, you know, it was talking about communism. And the thing that they got rid of was the Bible, even though the Bible is, you know, has lost many precious things from it because of the translations of men or men who, oh, well, we don't want that part in it, you know, and Satan's had his hand in that. That's why the coming forth of the Book of Mormon as a second testament of Jesus Christ was so important. So those principles and those things that were lost could come back in and we could see how Heavenly Father loves us and wants us to be. Um, so I applaud each of you for showing up each week because I know you do. And for sharing your, your testimonies and sharing your insights into these the talks and the scriptures that we discuss because it's important to help others and we're leaving a history for others to follow and find. And John, can I, I don't know if you're ready to wrap up. No, uh, did you guys, uh -huh. we're open. go ahead. Okay. I was just thinking like, did you guys talk about paragraph 16? How she talks about her why? A little bit, not very much. Okay. I just know that like in the the summary you mailed out that Emily posted that she said that like that's what she structured this whole talk around. Um and that it like touched someone else. And so she was like, Yeah, I'm really grateful that like her experience, the reason why she comes to God has helped someone else to think, oh, I might want to try this to see if there's actually something to this, right? Right. I'll go ahead and read it if that's okay. Go ahead. Okay, she says, each of us will have to discover our own response to those deeply personal questions about what degree of relationship you want to experience with Jesus Christ. And she offers hers. It says, I walk this path as a beloved daughter of heavenly parents, divinely known and deeply trusted. As a child of the covenant, I am eligible to receive promised blessings. I have chosen to walk with the Lord. I have been called to stand as a witness of Christ. When the path feels overwhelming, I am strengthened with enabling grace. Each time I cross the, th cross the threshold of his house, I experience deeper covenant relationship with him. I am sanctified with his spirit, endowed with his power, and set apart to build his kingdom. Through a process of daily repentance and weekly partaking of the sacrament, I am learning to become steadfast and to go about doing good. I walk this path with Jesus Christ, looking forward to the promised day when he will come again. Then I will be sealed his and lifted up as a holy daughter of God. This is why I walk the covenant path, why I cling to covenant promises, why I enter the, his covenant house, and why I wear the holy government as a constant reminder, because I want to live in committed covenant relationship with him. And um, part of what stuck out to me is just how much of like the progress of that really is nestled inside of the gospel of Jesus Christ, having faith and trusting in Christ, being led to repent through sincere desire to want to come closer to God 
and then taking upon Christ's name through baptism. And then once we've done that ordinance once, we continue to repeat the process weekly as we partake of the sacrament. When we partake of the sacrament, it shows that we're willing to enter into covenant again with God. It's a renewal of covenant. Right. And if we're prepared with, with our repentant hearts, we are washed clean again. Um, and to the extent that we're able to honor that pattern and live it with a soft heart, with an eye towards God wanting to get closer to him, I just want to testify that there really is beautiful progress there and a coming into Christ and a coming into Heavenly Father. And I think it's also significant that when we take the sacrament, we take it in community. Usually the, the pandemic kind of threw a wrench in that. Um, but we take it in community. Um, and we witness as a collective that this is, this is our focus. And it is so nice to be able to be in community as we, we take on some of the obligations that can feel heavy. And then um, in, in paragraph 24, she says, Thankfully, we walk this covenant path together calling out encouragement along the way. As we share our personal experience with Christ, we will strengthen personal devotion. Anyway, I just, I want to say that I, I've experienced that and I'm grateful as well to be able to meet with you. Yes. Vivian, Thank you. Did, you. did you have anything that you wanted to share, Vivian, today? I don't know if you're out of your meeting or not. But... No, I am out of my meeting. Um... I just, uh, oh, sorry, my sons are talking here. Um, one of the things that really I loved about this talk is uh, just a reminder that in the scriptures we have examples of how the Lord was there for each and every single person who needed it. And uh, that for me is just a reminder that uh, he can do the same for me. And uh, especially when you look at all the, um, uh, what is it? The I can't think of the word right now, but it, at the end of the talk where she has her little uh, footnotes. Oh, yeah, and as yeah. I was reading that, I, I actually read through almost all of these and in each and every single one of these people, um, were in need and and they thought they had failed or couldn't do anymore and um the lord was always there for them so um i love this talk it's just a beautiful reminder of how we can be closer to to the lord and how everyone not necessarily goes through the same trials but we often have the same feelings of loneliness and despair. And um, and in the footnotes, all those scriptures reminded me that I'm that I'm not alone. And then I can go to the Lord and He'll be there for me. Mm -hmm. I like the scripture, Matthew eleven, twenty-eight, thirty. Come unto me, and ye all that labor are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The one take take upon take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart. Ye shall find rest. I love that. It's, it's amazing how you know throughout the scriptures and throughout any of the promises, we can take whoever's name is in there. And replace it with ours. Mm -hmm. Because those promises are just as much for us as they are for the person whose name was recorded in the scriptures. So it's you know, true. The 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 five the five finger promises from God that he gave to Jacob. I am with you. I will keep you safe. 
I will bring you home again. I will not leave you. I will keep my promise to you. I know that Heavenly Father loves each and every one of us, and he wants us all to return to his presence. We are his children. We get to choose whether we return or not. It's up to us. He's already done all the work. And he is waiting for us. Just as that picture of Christ standing at the door where there's no doorknob. We mm -hmm. have to open the door. We have to be active to allow him into our lives. And I, I love him so much. And I'm so grateful for come follow me and the the deeper understanding that I have come to come to through studying the scriptures on a daily basis and through deepening my relationship with my Savior and my Heavenly Father. And I would encourage those out there that listen to this in the future and those that are here to do the same thing because that's what will bring us joy and peace throughout eternity. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Does anyone else have anything else that they would like to, to share at this time? Well, I think Colleen would want us to tell what's coming up next week. Oh, I, I don't have the book in front of me. Do I? <laughs> I just printed out papers because I didn't want to write in her book. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's right here. Let me grab it. I have it. Have next it? week is, yeah, it's Ian S. Arden. And his talk is called Love Thy Neighbor. It's about humanitarian efforts. Well, that's a great subject, isn't it? Oh. Yep. Page 30. Everything, everything can be made better through love. Heavenly Father wants us to love like him. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here today. It's always a joy to, to listen in. I usually just listen in as I'm walking the dogs or whatever, uh, to make sure that there are no technical hiccups because Colleen's, a little, <laughs> Colleen relies Colleen's on a little challenged on technology. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's okay. That's why we make a good, a good team. Um, so next week, we'll look forward to seeing you then. And I'm going to pause or stop the recording right now.